Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis up to the commodities. We're gonna work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals and commodities, ETFs that I follow. I'll interject my financial opinions as we go. And if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com where I dive deeper into these topics, sectors and individual companies and share freely what I'm doing uh, in this commodity bull market in terms of companies, when I'm buying them, and whatnot. So we do have a coupon code. May Day is still active. M-A-Y-D-A-Y, one word, if you're interested in joining. So let's dive in here. Let's take a look and see what's going on with the markets today. So we're starting with the DXY. This is up today, 0.13%. Still looks good to go higher. Uh, as I don't see any reverse candlesticks uh, coming over here. So everything looks good uh, to keep the path over the medium term, I'll call it, to go higher. Uh, but there are some things that we are watching that could impact the dollar to go lower. And we'll go over that with yields. Um, and for the most part, the dollar goes up when compared to other currencies, We'll call it monetary tightness out there. So if we lower rates a little bit and they lower rates a lot, the dollar could still go up. Or if we tighten more uh, than other currencies tightening policies, then we would have a strengthening dollar. That is what I mean by monetary. Um, it, it's basically a measurement of monetary tightness relativity. Uh, so right now that still looks good to go higher in the short to medium term. The two year yield, we have been in this consolidation zone, moving sideways. If we zoom in, we are kind of squeezed up and we're about to break either higher or lower here. Uh, and this entered from the top down. So we'll see if we get a move lower uh, in the two year bond or two year yields, I should say. 10-year yields, it's the same thing. We're all just squeezing up right now. And we did enter this from the top side. So we could break to the downside in the 10-year yield, which could also engage a larger move to the downside. Same with the 30-year yield. It's the same setup across the board, across all those different duration of yields. When we look at the TYX TNX ratio, we are slightly higher today. And what we could see if the two year falls faster than the longer of the curve, this one's the 30 year and 10 year, we could see it finally uninvert, giving precious metals a uh, kick to the pants to the upside. Bond prices, to me, this looks like we could go higher and this is giving me conf more confidence that we could see a setup where the yield curve does uninvert, that people run into bonds and yields do drop. That also coincides with unemployment rate, uh, where I've been looking at those here recently, and we could see a potential slowdown in the market. It is possible here. Uh, so I will talk about that with everyone on the mid, well, I should say the question and answer session. Uh, coming up this week and we'll talk about it there. Two year, 10 year, uh, we are still inverted. We are holding on to that inversion still, uh, but we do have a little bit of a pattern that has been forming here uh, where we've been coming on up uh, into basically a rising wedge here where we could start to break to the downside. If we see yields drop, specifically the two year yield drop like a rock, and we see the yield curve uninvert, um, that could be cause for concern. I will say that, and that could happen here uh, shortly. We've got gold. Now, this is the weird part. Gold generally likes when that yield curve uninverts. Um, sometimes, if it's like a sell everything liquidity event, everything gets sold off. Uh, but this here looks like it wants to go lower still. Um, we've got this pattern, we're sitting on top of it, 
we saw these large selling pressure candlesticks, almost like someone's going in there and just ripping sell orders to the downside. Kind of interesting. Uh, but longer term, this is all broken to the upside. And it still looks well poised to move higher. And I do think we will move higher if we get uh, a yield curve on inversion and those yields start to drop. Silver down, uh, surprisingly it's down. Um, nice big move down today to about minus 2%. We do have a falling wedge that we've broken out. Is this just kind of a retrace move before heading higher? Are we gonna consolidate sideways? Uh, the reason I'm more, con or I should say, more bullish on it is because we've broken these larger patterns to the upside. We've broken, we've consolidated here, we broke that to the upside, we've broken the downtrends to the upside. Um, I'd be looking for upside in silver and gold. Uh, shorter term though, we've got some, some downside pressure move and maybe it comes back here for a full retest, completely possible. Uh, Platinum also had a little bit lower uh, today and we still haven't broken out of that longer term trend line. Um, big picture view though, it looks fantastic. Your consolidation period ended uh, basically here, and we've been working our way sideways, just waiting for this yield curve, I think, to uninvert, and then that money to be printed uh, or yields to, to drop. But right now, it's holding on, it's underneath the trend line. Uh, palladium selling off a little bit greater today. We are up against resistance. Uh, I drew that on the weeklies there, but here's the daily. Um, through there and we're still consolidating between support and this resistance line into this corner there. GDX down a little bit but still looks well poised for a move higher. I would be remaining positive on GDX and that is still above all of these resistance now support levels. Uh, GDXJ also looking pretty good. It is sitting on top. Yeah we were down today but it's still in a flag pattern and SILJ also down today, but still looking okay. We've broken out of this consolidation falling wedge to the upside. So I would be looking for higher moves. And I know in the short term, we've pulled back from about $13 down to what, $11.22. Um, sentiment's probably down a little bit because of that pullback, but I would be looking for a move higher. XEU to gold ratio, it's still above that trend line that I'm looking at. And the only way to, for me to get bearish, this has to break all the way out. Uh, I just don't see that happening. Um, we've broken the downtrend here. I'm looking for an upside move, especially with where we've got our yield curve. So I'm looking for a move higher. It could be dramatically higher for XAU to gold. Crude oil down 1%. Today, um, we had a nice big move out of the bottom here uh, and it still looks good we can draw a trend line through this i mean basically all that is broken to the upside uh, for crude oil and crude oil looks surprisingly strong it looks really good um, even with the yield curve being inverted like it is ttf gas up 2.7 percent and that still looks good to work its way on up slowly we've got natural gas in america right on support uh, it is a little, yeah, it's kind of a bigger bloody nose. We're right on support though. We'll see if we can get some upside momentum here. Um, our boy XOP, yeah, you know me, looking fantastic. Probably feeling fantastic. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Um, we are above the neckline, which is that neckline going across. We are sitting uh, with a bullish engulfing yesterday and a small bloody nose today. That looks good to go higher for XOP. And the neckline is right where that this horizontal line is going across there. So we're right there. I'd like to see some big follow through here. Really hopeful for XOP in the short term. OIH also getting that bloody nose. It's up today, 0.38%. Um, and you can draw trend lines in here. You can say, ah, there's a trend line here and that broke. Uh, so a lot of trend lines have broken. The support areas have held. Um, it looks good for energy service, and XOP, the explore, exploration companies. Coal, looking pretty good. It's holding on. It's broken out of that downtrend that I've talked about a lot. 
And I would be bullish here. Um, now, here's the thing. How can coal, nat gas, and oil go up in a potential slowdown of the market, maybe? We have unemployment. It is going up. We've got an inverted yield curve, which is generally good for gold, silver, and is a headwind sometimes because the slowdown in the market and the sentiment with that slowdown uh, generally impacts energy in a negative way, but we're not seeing that yet in the charts. Uh, so kind of an interesting setup there. We are seeing that slowdown impact on the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust still looks like it wants to go lower. Pretty big move today, 3.5% lower, and we'll see if we can get some support right where we're at. Um, we got a little couple, a couple, a couple of little wicks at the bottom there. Is what we're looking at. So we'll see what a bounce looks like if we get one. URA down one percent. We do have a wick at the bottom. It is still holding on at the moment, um, and we're right on that support line. And I can draw this support line like this as well, hitting the bottoms of a lot of these. URNM, uh, it's doing the same thing as URA, just a little wick at the bottom, right in the support zone. And URNJ down a little bit. And we do have a lot of support in this general box there of a lot of people trading shares. We'll see if we can put something together in the uranium equity uh, move, but this has been bearish so far uh, in the short term. Copper selling off. Um, I know we had rates go up a little bit and the dollar, and this still has downside momentum. Uh, so that still looks like we could pull back lower in the short term. COPX is also now following it, but that's broken this kind of squeezing wedge there to the upside, which doesn't really match the price of the copper futures. So we are getting some disconnects in some of these, and maybe it does sell off, and maybe this is a shoulder head shoulder that is developing uh, potentially and we'll see if we get that sell off uh, iron ore uh, putting in that double bottom it's still just trading sideways today up 0.19 and we'll see if we get a double bottom here we've got aluminum down just a little bit uh, yields are generally uh, takes the, the wind out of the sails for a lot of these base metals uh, momentum still to the downside in the short term for aluminum uh, nickel also selling off some in the short term. Uh, maybe we have further downside if rates continue higher. We've got Mu uh, heading a little bit lower today, but still looks good in this general area of support. Uh, that is a retest, this bigger pattern, breakout here, retest here, and we're right at that retest. That's generally a good time to accumulate given the technicals. Emerging markets up 0.2 or down 0.23% down a little bit with yields and dollar up a little bit. Carry down a little bit, and anything that's been sensitive to rates are, is basically down today. Uh, copper, aluminum, nickel, uh, we could see KRE break lower. It, it really depends on what rates do, and we'll monitor that going forward. Uh, tan also down about 3%, no love there. Uh, lithium down, that still looks pretty weak and looks looking like it's heading for that 36 retest there. We've got RMX also selling off and that's broken a rising pattern to the downside so still looks pretty weak for rare earth metals. Baltic dry index down just a little bit today uh, but still looks good. We've got higher lows working its way on up still and that trend is still intact. XHB down 2.84% another interest rate sensitive area and we'll see if we break lower or higher out of this and uh, the housing starts have dropped a little bit they have slowed down and maybe we do get a slowdown in the market and this does pull back uh, before heading higher and the reason i say before heading higher is because we still have a deficit of homes in relationship to family formation we just don't have the affordability uh, if they were to lower rates i would would most likely push uh, affordability higher and the home builders higher because of that demand and that affordability going into that demand. Uh, Russell 2000 down slightly today. Uh, just been moving sideways for the most part over the past few weeks. Um, 
that's that's kind of what I see there. And we're still squeezing in this this corner here. The S and P 500 surprisingly is up higher. Um, maybe the plunge protection teams in there buying some shares. Same with the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq's up 1.26 percent, uh, and it's it's continued to go up here surprisingly. Uh, and to me, this kind of looks like a double top uh, that's been pushed on up. We had a nice big selling pressure candlestick there right off the resistance, and somehow it's pushed higher with smaller buy candlesticks. SMTI uh, up about 2%. Uh, pretty big selling pressure yesterday. We'll see if this gets saved or if we roll over. Uh, NVIDIA also up quite a bit today, but this does not look that strong to me. Um, and the reason I say that, when you look at a longer term chart, you get these big wicks at the top like that. Um, and obviously, we're getting close to the end of this month. So if you leave this wick at the top on a monthly candlestick that screams that we want to at least go lower in the short term and potentially it could turn into a longer term top. We'll see and continue to monitor it. Uh, BTC up quite a bit, 4.26%, but the momentum's been heading lower. Uh, we'll see if the momentum continues or if the, the bulls can turn this thing around here. Uh, looks a little bit toppy with all that selling pressure that occurred uh, Monday. And then Ethereum uh, up today, actually it's a bullish engulfing. We'll see if they can put together a little rally here to the upside for Ethereum. And Ethereum looks a lot stronger than Bitcoin at the moment. But again, we'll see uh, over the next few trading sessions if there's any follow through. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content, subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe to the website if you'd like. Uh, we've got that May Day coupon code going on. Uh, we do have a question and answer session coming up this weekend. I haven't decided if it's going to be Saturday or Sunday. We've done a couple Sundays just because I had to go back and visit um, in Minnesota. So um, we'll figure that one out. Uh, sign up if you're interested, and we'll continue to look at all this data uh, and see kind of the big picture macro view, which direction we're going to go here uh, over the next year or two. All right, guys, uh, that's what I've got for today. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.